welcome everybody to the Lenape Regional High School District here at Shawnee High School. Uh, I'd like to thank Joe Weiss for playing the beautiful music tonight, so thank you, Joe. I'd like to welcome uh, Superintendent of Schools, Dr. Carol Burbaum. Yeah. Members of our Board of Education from Medford, uh, Mr. David Stowe, Ms. Allison Eckel, and from Medford Lakes, Mr. Steve Lee. I'd also like to welcome uh, Dr. Ron Lippy, the class of 1977, and his family. Dr. Nancy I. Williams, class of 1980, and her family. Mr. Michael Cook, class of 1996, and his family. And Ms. Sarah Smith, class of 1998, and her family. I would also like to uh, welcome uh, all the current and former uh, Shawnee staff members, and welcome back to Shawnee High School. Um, so we speak so highly of the tradition of excellence here at Shawnee, and it's become the hallmark of what Shawnee High School is all about. And it is my sincere privilege to be part of this sermon that will honor uh, those that exemplify what this tradition is all about. These four outstanding graduates have taken their Shawnee education and excelled in the fields of business, research, and medicine. We are proud of you, and our hope is that your accomplishments will serve as validation to, uh, to our current students, and that message is that if you take Shawnee's education and combine it with hard work, and dedication, you've created a recipe for success in whatever path you choose. So I want to congratulate the inductees uh, on their successes, and I want to thank you all for coming to tonight's ceremony. So at this time, I'd like to introduce uh, Ms. Mrs. Ryan DiNatale, who's our coordinator of our Hall of Fame services and also our supervisor of mathematics, Mrs. DiNatale. Hi. Thank you, Mr. Campbell. This is a very special night for Shawnee High School. Each year, one of the schools in the Lenape Regional High School District honors distinguished alumni, faculty, and community members by inducting members into its Academic Hall of Fame. This year, it's Shawnee High School's turn. Tonight, we have the distinct privilege of recognizing four outstanding individuals with the highest honor of Shawnee High School Academic Hall of Fame. The Lenape Regional High School District Academic Halls of Fame serves two purposes. First, to recognize outstanding Lenape Regional High School District alumni who have achieved distinction in their lives and chosen fields after high school through personal achievements and or significant contributions in their careers and communities. And secondly, to provide examples and incentives for our current and, former stu and future students. Tonight, we honor four individuals who will join the other 11 individuals currently in our Academic Hall of Fame. Each inductee will be given a crystal award to proudly display at home, and a plaque will be permanently displayed on our high school walls in the main hallway. It is now time to begin the presentation of awards. I would like to introduce our student representative from the Academic Hall of Fame Selection Committee, Senior Claire Flannery, who will facilitate the award section of our program this evening. Thank you, Mrs. Dean and Tally. Good evening, everyone. Tonight, we will introduce our inductees in chronological order, beginning with our first inductee who graduated from Shawnee High School in 1977. Before we begin, I would like to bring you back to life at Shawnee High School in 77. 470 seniors graduated from Shawnee High School, and the principal of Shawnee was Mr. Gordon Galtieri. Gal Gal Galtier. <laughs> I apologize. The spring musical was Funny Girl, and the yearbook was dedicated to the yearbook advisors, Mr. Godfrey and Miss Cook. In June of 1977, our next inductee was in a unique situation. He was completing his high school credits while simultaneously finishing up his first year as a college student at your sinus. Motivation to achieve his goals has helped our next, next inductee become a re renowned orthopedic surgeon and instructor who, had, who takes on the most challenging surgeries. In his own words, our next inductee said, anyone can do the easy ones. After all, somebody has to do it. At this time, please welcome Shawnee High School senior John Muller to the podium to introduce our first inductee. Good evening. It is my distinct pleasure to introduce Dr. Ronald Lippi, Shawnee High School, class of 1977. Honorary Dr. Ronald Lippi is a 1977 graduate of Shawnee High School. Dr. Lippi is an orthopedic surgeon who has been in practice for 28 years. 
and his current position allows for a private practice and an orthopedic residency program. Dr. Lippi serves as Chairman of Orthopedics, Pinnacle Health System, Clinical Professor of Neurosciences and Anatomy, and Assistant Clinical Professor of Orthopedics for Penn State University, College of Medicine, Director of Bone and Joint Institute, Pinnacle Health System, Core Faculty, Orthopedic Residency, Pinnacle Health System, and a Member Executive Committee, Orthopedic Institute of Pennsylvania. Dr. Lippi was given the Orthopedic Surgery Teaching Award at Pinnacle Health System and has delivered talks on orthopedics at various conferences and symposiums. Congratulations, Dr. Lippi. Thank you. Um, say a few words. So uh, somebody read an email. Um, how many here have read the email that I put together uh, a couple weeks ago? Oh, gosh, a lot more of you than I would have expected. Okay, so I, I don't want to, uh, to rehash that, but um, without you know, being too redundant, uh, thanks go to many people. And uh, like I said in the email, I can't make this up. My freshman health teacher from 44 years ago hears about this and contacts me and says, hey, I've nominated you. Can you give me some information on it? Mr. Melagrano, thanks very much. And uh, a couple of the others that um, deserve um, uh, recognition. Um, I, I wrote a little bit about it, but yeah, when I was a uh, junior in, uh, at Shawnee, um, my pre-calculus teacher realized that she could not stand an entire year of me being in her class. <laughs> so she pulled me aside and said, listen, why don't we put you on independent study and I'm going to put you in calculus. Now calculus, there was only one calculus class and it was an honors class. And uh, you know, I said, do you think I can do this? And she said, yeah, uh, you know, I think you can. And uh, so off I went to join the, um, uh, the calculus class of uh, Mrs. Oberg, who uh, taught me enough calculus that I didn't open my book my freshman year of college, it was that good. But the problem arose is when uh, it was time to uh, take my senior classes, uh, we sat down and all the math and science was gone. So um, off I, the decision was we got to do something with them, so they sent me to college um, without a high school degree. I cannot make that up. Um, and that's why uh, a couple things you should note. Number one, um, the, you know, I graduated with a class of 77, but I left in 76. If you look at all these beautiful color pictures of these mature seniors, and the one of the 15-year-old kid in black and white, that's me, because I left this place at the age of 16, and if it weren't for the truly special people that supported me, that were able to go out of their way and send me on my way, I probably wouldn't be here today. Uh, I see a lot of uh, smiling faces, and if I don't mention Ted Steinmetz, then I should not have made it here. Uh, those of you who did not have the, yeah, please give Ted a round of applause. Um, a fabulous teacher, loads of energy, and wore as, um, Joe Gazer sent me in a recent email all kinds of hats at Shawnee, along with being a chemistry teacher who just was full of energy and full of excitement for the course. He was also the guy who did everything else. He did the school spirit. He did the dances. He played the music before the football games. He was the one who essentially orchestrated the, um, uh, the pep rallies. He was what Shawnee High School was. And without those special people and a bunch of others that I don't have time to mention because you'll all start falling asleep. Um, I just want to say thanks to all of them and thanks for why I'm here. Appreciate it. Okay, so our next inductee graduated in 1980. 518 seniors from Shawnee in 1980 and the principal was still Mr. Gordon Gal. Galtier, Galtier, um, Galtier, Galtier, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> the school musical was the pajama game and the yearbook was dedicated to the senior class advisors, Mrs. Claire Noble and Mr. B Michael Bacon. The varsity field hockey team made league champions with the assistance of our next inductee, who is also team captain. 
During the 1980 season, the field hockey team was inspired by the song Making It by David Naughton. Our inductee mentioned this song in her entry of the senior directory. I'd like to read some of the lyrics. The top of the ladder is waiting for me. I'm making it. I've got the chance. I'm taking it. No more. No faking it. This is this time in life. I'm making it. Our next inductee earned the spot as valid Victorian of the class of 1980. And as you soon will hear, she is still making it to the top. At this time, I would like to introduce senior Erica Barr to present the award to our next inductee. Good evening. It is my distinct pleasure to introduce Dr. Nancy I. Williams, class of 1980. Dr. Nancy I. Williams is also being honored. After graduating from Shawnee in 1980, she went on to Bucknell for her bachelor's degree, Ohio State for her master's degree, and Boston University for her Doctor of Science in Exercise Physiology. She did postdoctoral work at the University of Pittsburgh, was a visiting assistant professor at Ohio University, and in 1997 was hired by the Department of Kinesiology at Penn State University. She was promoted up the ranks to professor and has been serving as the department head since 2012. Under Williams' leadership, the graduate program of kinesiology at Penn State is ranked third in the country by the National Academy of Kinesiology. She has been inducted as a fellow into the National Academy of Kinesiology, has served as president and past president of the Female Athlete Triad Coalition, and she is currently serving a three-year term to the elected position of president of the American Kinesiology Association. Nancy has had a very successful career as a faculty member at Penn State. She has published over 100 peer-reviewed publications in scientific journals and books. She has spoken about her research at national and international venues. Her research has documented the causal role of low energy availability in the induction and reversal of menstrual disturbances with exercise training. For over 25 years, she has worked in this field to elucidate the underlying physiological and behavioral mechanisms whereby reproductive function is suppressed in women during chronic low energy availability created by an imbalance between energy intake and energy expenditure. She has worked to translate this work to the layperson by co-authoring consensus statements and through her work with the Female Athlete Triad Coalition. Congratulations, Dr. Williams. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Uh, this is really fun. I, I, I think I was uh, valedictorian, but I didn't give a speech. I was too shy. There were four people that were ranked number one, and I really forget who did it, but it wasn't me. But uh, I'd like to thank the, the Board of Education and everyone else that, um, that uh, uh, for this recognition. I'd especially like to thank Ingrid Williams, who nominated me after we had a conversation on the bleachers last fall. Um, so I'm really honored and humbled by this recognition. Shawnee High School prepared me really well for college. I have uh, very fond memories of so many teachers, many that Ron named, coaches and fellow students, whose uh, high standards and amazing expertise helped me develop a strong work ethic, a healthy sense of competition, a fondness for biology and science, and opportunities to build interpersonal skills by being part of a team. Even though I ended up my high school career with a high rank, I wasn't really somebody to whom good grades came easy. I studied a lot and I worried. I did all my homework. I worried over every exam. I can remember spending hours on the phone with Karen Thorne. Remember Karen? Um, we would quiz each other for hours over uh, almost every course, but I remember Dr. Bacon's World Civ class. We talked for hours about that uh, material and then we would compare grades after exam. So there was a lot of hard work involved. Shawnee's preparation paid off as I went on to major in, in biology at uh, Bucknell and then pursue my master's and doctorate in exercise physiology. This was a relatively new field at the time, but it combined my love of sports with biology and an interest in human health. After my master's at OSU, I realized that I liked conducting research, and so I decided to go on for my doctorate. It's no surprise that I went into research because I began conducting experiments on the laws of physics when I was a kid. 
Um, I would, I would perform several trials to see if I could defy the laws of gravity by jumping off of my roof at different heights while holding a garbage bag above my head like a parachute. This was the first of several experiments I would conduct that yielded negative results because I, I never defeated uh, the laws of gravity. So I wouldn't be here without the love and support of my family and friends, and I want to thank my family, especially my mom. After my dad died when I was nine, my mom went back to work and raised three kids and put us all through college as a single mom on a limited budget. My mom is my hero. She taught me to work hard and how, how important integrity is, and she showed me how to, have, how to have resilience when life is hard. She always expected us to succeed, and she supported everything we did and sacrificed a great deal for us kids. I also have had the honor of working with some incredible role models throughout my career. I had great mentors in graduate school, uh, Drs. Bev Bullen and Janet MacArthur, who were pioneers in the world of research on exercise and the menstrual cycle. They supported me on an NIH grant to understand how exercise disrupts menstrual cycles in women and therefore fertility. The thinking at that time in the mid-80s was that exercise could disrupt the menstrual cycle and render a woman infertile, and it was because that the, physical, the thinking was the physical stress of exercise was too much for, for women's bodies. We went on to show that that wasn't true during my postdoc with Judy Cameron at the University of Pittsburgh where we exercised monkeys on treadmills and we found out that they could exercise um, as, hard as, as hard as we could run them um, and not lose their cycle as long as we fed them enough calories. And that was an important finding because it meant that women could do whatever they wanted in terms of training very hard and long hours and still not have it impact their fertility as long as they ate enough. Simple finding, but it was an important step uh, for women's health and exercise moving forward. Other work at that time was showing that if women lost their periods for a long time, they would start to suffer bone loss. And so women reports were coming out of female runners in the 80s who actually had osteoporosis because they hadn't had a period for years and they just kept training. And the real key was that they just weren't eating enough calories. Um, so through, through continuing to work uh, on, in that area um, throughout my time at Penn State, I've just had a great time continuing on. Um, the field has now evolved to be called the female athlete triad. So that's the interrelation between energy and eating and, and menstrual cycles and fertility and bone health. So this has been a fun field to be in. Um, and in the latter stage of my career, I've now had the pleasure and honor to really lead a great department of faculty and staff at Penn State. And I know it's the second time that Penn State was me mentioned tonight. So that's really cool. Um, so that role has been really challenging. As many of you in leadership positions know, it's not always fun, but it's really been a growth opportunity for me, and I've been honored to do it. Um, I'll next be able to help shape the, the field of kinesiology going forward as the president of the American Kinesiology Association. And just so you know, that just means the study of movement. So uh, it combines a lot of sub-disciplines over the study of how exercise and physical activity improve health. So I'm looking forward to continuing and finishing out my career at Penn State. It's been a great place for me to be. It's four hours from my home and my family. Um, but I just want to once again express my gratitude for this recognition and this honor. I've always known that any success that I've had or achieved is due to the love and support of my family, friends, my colleagues. And I've always felt really fortunate to have grown up in this area and gone to such great schools as we've been able to, um, to do here in Medford. I had a great childhood and an excellent education. Thank you very much. Okay, so our next inductee graduated in 1996. 518 graduated from Shawnee High School in 1996, and the principal was Mr. John Johnson. This time, <laughs> I knew you guys were gonna laugh. <laughs> this, this is the time to remember by Billy Joel, was quoted throughout the yearbook. Joel, Joel, Joel. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> throughout the yearbook. Don't make me speak to <laughs> please don't, please don't. <laughs> was quoted throughout the yearbook, and the school musical was Hello, Dolly. 
The varsity football team set the school record for the most victories in the school's history. They were the first team in the Shawnee history to play in the Group 4 finals at the Giants Stadium. Our next, our next inductee was a member of the varsity football team. He was personally awarded with multiple prestigious athletic awards during his high school career and attended Wake Forest on a full athletic scholarship. He was an elite athlete on the field and is now an elite athlete in life. In his own words, he said, the football and academic foundation that Shawnee provided has given me the tools I need to excel in the business world and a competitive advantage in the academic world. At this time, I would like to introduce senior Jeremy Fisher to present the award to our next inductee. Good evening. It is my distinct pleasure to introduce Mr. Michael Cook, class of 1996. Also being honored and inducted is Mr. Michael Cook, 1996 graduate of Shawnee High School who has served as founder and CEO of five privately held technology companies. Four of his companies have served world-class brands such as Campbell's, Visa, General Motors, P&G, Pepsi, Nike, Gillette, and McDonald's. He has built and created an industry-leading global delivery model and scaled multiple technology development centers to over 400 resources each. His teams have delivered across 267 offices in 79 countries worldwide. Mr. Cook has won four Kane Lions over the course of his career, the ultimate accolade for the advertising, creative marketing communications, entertainment, design, and tech industries. Mr. Cook has appeared on the cover of Forbes twice in Europe and has been recognized by Forbes magazine as one of the most powerful people in the world. In addition, he has appeared on the cover of Men's Health and been recognized as the fittest CEO in Europe. <laughs> work for that one. <laughs> Mr. Cook also works with future entrepreneurs by sponsoring and leading the Wharton School of Business Entrepreneur Program Business Competition and been a keynote speaker at the Georgetown Business School for their startup competition. Congratulations, Mr. Cook. So thank you very much. Um, this award means a lot to me, not only because of what I was able to accomplish here at Shawnee, but I love the fact that it's recognizing what was done after Shawnee. Because during our time here, we're equipped with so many things that maybe at the time we don't understand that we're being equipped with. And then as you go on to your university and your college, as you go into the business world, you say, wow, I have a strong core foundation. And um, with any core foundation, there's a lot of people that are instrumental in that. And um, I'm just so pleased to have a few of them here today, and I'll take some time. Um, Ms. Rudero, who nominated me, um, I'll tell a story uh, about, uh, I'll, I'll, keep, I'll keep it good. So I was, uh, let's say this, there was, in the academic arena, uh, I, I did pretty well, but mathematics was always a bit of a challenge to me. So after my junior year, I was getting numerous scholarship offers from top universities. And at that time, when you committed to a university, you couldn't take an official visit to your senior year. And I was just heck bent on committing to a university. So I was struggling a bit with Algebra 2. And, and Ms. Rudero took the time to really help me through that. Because if I didn't pass, I wouldn't have been able to go visit the universities, which in turn unlocked these opportunities, which in turn sits me here today. So what I've learned from that, and and where I'm so humbled, and a lot of the things that I've learned, I've taken to the business world, is, is see potential, right? There's moments when you can say, hey, you know, but see the potential, nurture the potential to bring out greatness. And by her taking her time to get me through Algebra 2, to be able to go make these visits, it just unlocked a bunch of opportunities. And for that, I'm, I'm forever thankful. And I really appreciate that. Um, Second of all, we've got Coach Welsh. And Coach Welsh, uh, the impact that he's had on my life as a, a young man in shaping me, my integrity, how to be a, a good person, how to be a competitor, how to take that and do it with an air of class, I, I can never forget that. And there's little lessons that he taught me too, you know, where you have to go get what you want. When I was a sophomore, you know, I was one of the first sophomores to start on defense. And I remember at that time, the starting 11 wore black jerseys. And Coach Welsh said, okay, you're starting. Now go get your black jersey from the senior, take it and wear it out to practice. 
And I'm like, oh, God, that's, that's a little bit of an issue, you know? But you know what I did? I sucked it up. I went ahead. I looked him in the eyes. I took that jersey, and I, and I never let it go. But to be able to take that strength, to be able to go confront, to get what you want, it's just a lesson. It's not in, it's not in the books. It's what's taught because there's such a great staff here at Shawnee. And then Coach Gushu, man, where do I begin? You, you, the same. You've, you've taught me how to be a man. You taught me how to be a leader. You gave, you believed in me and gave me opportunity where I could either seize it or not seize it. And for that, I'll, I'll ever be thankful. And what's great about Coach Gushu is he's got these different sayings. And, and, and as, I, as you all know, so even today, when I'm in my companies and I'm, I'm with my employees, there's a perfect saying that I have. And I say to them, I said, you can't hang with the owls at night if you want to soar with the eagles in the morning. <laughs> and, and that came from Coach Gushy, right? So you guys want to go out and have fun? But I'll see you in the morning. And, uh, and, and, and a lot of those things have been instilled. And uh, I, I, I hear myself, a lot of these things that they taught to me being said every single day. And it comes out. And once again, it goes back to that strong foundation. And then to my parents. Um, my parents, when I was young, they gave me probably the greatest gift you can ever give. And that was, if I work hard enough and I sacrifice, I can be anything I want. And that is a gift that has no price, has no tag. I can't tell them how much I appreciate that because that's something that stays with you. But that goes back to a lot of the things to where people don't understand. Pe people say, hey, listen, has this path been easy? No, it's hard work. You have to grind. It's not like you miraculously sell a business or you fall into luck. You need to get up every day, go to work, make the people around you better. And that was something that was instilled in all of these people. That when you come from this school district, you come from Shawnee, one thing you're not scared of is hard work. One thing you're not scared of is to go and compete. And you want to go out and ultimately win. And I think these are some of the things that were instilled to me. And this is why coming back here at this stage in my career, now trust me, the best is yet to come. I'm far from done. But to be able to have this at this juncture to share and reflect, make sure the people that I know care about them, how much they meant to me, and then let's watch and see what I'm going to do in, in the future. So thank you very much for this award, the board, Shawnee. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm humbled. And uh, thank you very much. It's, I much, I appreciate it. Okay, so our final inductee graduated in 1998. 525 seniors graduated from Shawnee High School in 98, and Mr. John Johnson was still the principal. <laughs> <laughs> the Wiz was the spring mu musical, and the yearbook was dedicated to the senior class advisors, Mr. Labra and Mrs. Shirley Stagnaro? Stagnaro? Our next inductee began her career in the medical field as a student athletic trainer at Shawnee High School, and she gone on to help an incredible number of people with her knowledge and abilities. In the yearbook, under future plans, our next inductee wrote, Inside all of us lingers remnants that remind us of what we could be like. The sensations follow following a dismal monotone of predicted catastrophe. Sorry. <laughs> Burst out, but, <laughs> but you know the perfect life is not merely a dream. It will come true if you make it. Our next inductee is certainly working hard to make her dreams come true. At this time, I would like to introduce senior Sydney Wheeler to present the award to our last inductee. Good evening. It is my distinct pleasure to introduce Ms. Sarah Smith, class of 1998. Honoree Ms. Sarah Smith is a physician assistant with the Philadelphia Fight Community Health Centers. She began with them in 2005 and has been promoted over the years and now serves Chief Quality Officer. Ms. Smith helped grow the agency from one community health center to four full service health centers that reach over 4,500 patients annually. As an employee of a non-for-profit, federally qualified health center, Ms. Smith's job is to provide culturally competent, comprehensive primary care and state-of-the-art HIV primary care to low-income members of the community, along with research, consumer education, advocacy, social services, and outreach to people living with HIV and those who are at high risk. 
In her role as Chief Quality Officer, she works with staff across all the health centers to ensure that all patients receive low threshold quality medical care regardless of their background and ability to pay. In 2018, her organization, with her lead, was awarded a Certificate of Achievement in Quality Improvement for the best overall clinical performance among all health centers in the nation, placing in the top 30% of quartile rankings for 2017 clinical quality measures. Ms. Smith is a credentialed HIV specialist by the American Academy of HIV Medicine. She serves as project officer for major federal and local medical funding grants, chairs the quality management program, and monitors compliance with standards in the health centers. Currently, she is leading a work group to improve care delivered to transgender and gender nonconforming patients in all of our health centers. In her professional world, Ms. Smith was recognized for her dedication to her community and profession. Ms. Smith was the recipient of the Above and Beyond Award 2017, which is given to a FIGHT staff member who goes above and beyond their job obligations on a consistent basis. In addition to the P.E. Jean Drew Andrew Award given to a Drexel University alumni for integrating the highest level of caring and humanitarianism into clinical practice and the Physician slash PA Team Award from the Pennsylvania Society of Physician, Physician Assistants for being part of an MDPA team showing outstanding collaboration and teamwork. She is a member of Shawnee's graduating class of 1998. Congratulations, Ms. Smith. Apparently, I like to talk about myself, but that's totally fine. <laughs> uh, so, I'm, like, I'm overwhelmed. Um, I'm honored. Uh, you know, I have um, both the unique pleasure um, and sad distinction to take care of people every day who've been failed by the educational system and who have been failed by the healthcare system. Uh, you know, seeing patients who have a high school diploma but can't read their names on the side of a medication bottle. Um, and so I'm reminded on a regular basis um, what, what I did not have, <laughs> right, which is a significantly better education. Um, and kind of like Mike said, there's no, well, P.S., I was an athletic trainer on that football team. <laughs> I wrapped all of those ankles. <laughs> and so I think I should get a fair amount of credit for all the <laughs> Success. Thank you. <laughs> uh, but, you know, very similarly, I don't think I would be where I am today um, having not had the experience that I had as, at Shawnee. Ironically, and I swear I didn't make up this story just for this reason, but in 1997, um, um, Principal Johnson actually brought the AIDS quilt to Shawnee. I don't know if anybody remembers that. Um, and I remember some of my friends being in a school play about HIV. I remember how moving that was. Um, and I knew that it sparked something in me, um, but it wasn't until quite a bit of a time later um, until I realized what that was. And actually, right after that play, I went to the store and I bought a, brace, a silver bracelet, which I forgot to wear, of course, <laughs> that has an AIDS ribbon on it, actually. And on the inside, it actually says, until there's a cure. Uh, flash forward 10 years later, I was in PA school. I begged to go to an HIV site. I had no idea why I was begging. Um, and I joke that they never got rid of me. <laughs> I've been there ever since. Um, you know, as Mike also said, it's hard work. Um, and that work wouldn't be possible without the support of my wife, who deals with lots of awfully long hours um, and a lot of crankiness at times. Um, and then, of course, for my family. My mom nominated me. I feel like that's kind of cheating. So I need to, <laughs> I need to kind of throw that out there for full transparency. She uh, nominated me, too. She, OK. Probably because we were both our sinus grads, maybe? Maybe? Um, but I think, as many of you know, my mom is also one of the best teachers who have uh, graced the halls of Shawnee High School. Um, I thankfully did not have to be in any of her classes, but oh, a hell of a lot of my friends survived because of her. Um, but you know, without the support of my family over the years, I don't know that they've always understood <laughs> my career paths or decisions, but they've uh, supported me nonetheless. So thank you. Is that all? Wow.
Wow. That was impressive. So thank you to all of our inductees and all of their families for coming tonight. We could not be more proud to recognize you for your accomplishments um, with this district honor. Please join me in one last round of applause for all of our Academic Hall of Fame inductees.